Happy very very late Pride Month and welcome to my channel. Today I will be making Piper McClane character from the Heroes of Olympus series and also from other Rick Riordan books. I will soon be making a series of Rick Riordan girl dolls, so stay tuned. As you can see, I have made three Rick Riordan characters in the past, Raina, Sadie, and Jazz. Four if you count Annabeth that I made with my best friend. I will in the future probably make another one with better skill on this channel. Subscribe to see more. I started getting inspirations from the Heroes of Olympus graphic novels of Piper's style and clothing and such. For this custom, I am using an Ever After High Rosabella Beauty doll for base. Rosabella have heavy molded features which is great for beginners but more experienced doll customizers may find it limiting to use. I take off her factory paint with acetone and spray her face with Mr. Super Clear to prime the face. I did not film this part because it's the same with every doll customizing video. I started sketching her face with a brown watercolor pencil and blocked in color. I use an eraser to clean up the mistakes. Because Piper has heterochromia, I wanted to give her green, blue, and brown in her iris. If the watercolor pencil starts slipping, then it's time to spray the doll again with Mr. Super Clear. But it's super toxic, so hold your breath, put on your goggles, and wear a filtration mask. You don't want lung problems in the future. Then I blush her face with chalk pastel. Over here, I'm contouring her nose with some brown chalk pastel. I'm using a cream color to highlight the bridge of her nose. I'm also blushing her body to make her seem more realistic. I am so glad Piper came out as bisexual or queer. It has been very interesting reading how Piper has grown. Much like how Rick Riordan wrote Nico. In the end, her brows came out a little thicker than I intended, but Rosabella's mold have a very full lip, so a thicker eyebrow and full lashes goes better with her overall look. I'm also highlighting her brows with the cream color pencil, and I also put some on her cupid's bow. I could not get my lashes as neat as the other doll customizers, but I tried. Using a gouache paint, I carefully whitened the scleras. And I also added the eye shine off camera.
Mosekido made a video years ago of how to make yarn widths. She used acrylic yarn cut by 30 centimeters, then I strung the yarn to a cloth hanger. Over here, I am using a brown colored acrylic yarn with one strand of blonde colored weft just to have a variation of hair colors. But it turns out the blonde weft was a little too much. I could have split the yarn in two so it wasn't so visually busy, but it was fine. I learned from my mistakes. I think I lost the footage of me brushing the yarn out with a metal pet brush, but you can check out Mosekito's video and I'll link it down in the description below. I straightened the brush out yarn with a hair straightener. Then I got the hot glue technique from Hexgen. He used a silicone pad and a silicone fingertip to make wefts which I found quick and easy. I will link his channel in the description box below. Go check it out because they are much more experienced than I am. I glued the wefts on with hot glue. I decided to give my doll a half pony with little braids, which you will see at the end. to Piper's weapon. The first knife that I made was too small and not proportionate to the doll so I made another one which is bigger and longer. I painted the blade with a acrylic copper color mixed with a little brown paint and the handle with black. As you can see, the proportions are much better. My mother helped me with the Camp Half-Blood t-shirt.
Next step is Piper's armor. Basically, I made a paper mache of the doll's torso. I wrapped her body with saran wrap and taped it to make the armor skin tight. I applied some Elmer's glue oil to the tape and spread it. Using a thin layer of tissue paper, I smoothed the tissue onto the doll. Then smothered it with another layer of glue. I trimmed the armor down to size. I mixed some copper paint and brown paint. and painted that onto the armor. After that dried, I also dry brushed the armor piece with a little black and brown acrylic paint. I drilled some holes in the side of the armor and laced it up with a string dab with some glue. For me, lacing this up was so hard and very, very time consuming, but a better artist probably could have done this much faster. That is how the armor piece turned out. On to the shoes. I think this might be Gulia's boots. I sanded off the Monster High logo.
Then I painted it brown with acrylic paint. I painted the soles a cream color. I loved how they turned out. I actually made some other clothing like the white shorts and the tie-dye top and also the yellow jacket. I bought the skirt somewhere else. After dressing her up, she's done. Overall, I really loved how she turned out. Also, if you're wondering, the reason I am only making girl dolls for my Rick Riordan series is that where I live, it's really hard to track down boy monster high dolls or even ever after high bodies, not to mention they're pretty expensive. And since I started this series with Ever After High Dolls, I have to use body types that will match for the final group shots. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos later in the future, please subscribe.